All right, how many times have you been asked the question, who would inherit the kingdom of God? Got to get out of the sunlight here. There you go. Can you see me? Who will inherit the kingdom of God? Flesh and blood will not inherit the immortal kingdom of God. Wow. Well, what's wrong with me? I'm saved. Well, let's see. 1 Corinthians 15, 40 to 54. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies, but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and the star differs. Star differs from star in splendor. Bible of Knowledge Commentary says the difference in splendor between the earthly bodies and the heavenly bodies suggested to Paul the differences between a natural and a spiritual body. Here's Daniel 12, 1 to 3. Take a look at that. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Notice that those who are resurrected to everlasting life will be like the stars forever and ever. Matthew 13, 43 corroborates this. Continuing on in 1 Corinthians 15, So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Bible Nam's commentary says, as earthly, an earthly natural body is fallen, and so is temporal, imperfect and weak. A heavenly spiritual body will be eternal, perfect and powerful. Now get, get this, it's so far, I'm in a, in a, a mortal body, a fleshy body. Imperfect, temporal, and weak. But I'm destined to have a spiritual body. You get it? Like a seed sown in the earth and the plant which proceeds from it, there is continuity but a gloriously evident difference. So it is written. The first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man from heaven. So we shall be dust of the earth, and then an eternal destiny of a resurrection body, which is spiritual. Verse 48, as was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the man from heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. Faith alone and Christ alone, now we're of heaven, we have a heavenly citizenship. 49, and just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, so we shall bear the likeness of the man from heaven. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, but we will, as part of our salvation, we get that heavenly body, right? Nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Those, those who are in eternal resurrected bodies are in view, not those who will be in mortal bodies who live and inherit their portion of the, in the millennial kingdom. Remember that. Israel. When they all believe in Jesus, in his second coming, fulfillment of the new covenant, they will inherit in their mortal bodies a portion of the millennial kingdom, but only until they get transferred into their resurrected bodies, and that will be eternal. So the kingdom does include mortals who are flesh and blood, a number of whom will inherit their portion of the kingdom. These are not in view, however, in 1 Corinthians 15, but are in view elsewhere. Take a look. Matthew 25, 34 to 36. Then the kingdom will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Recall that those are the ones who are in mortal bodies that were faithful and survived the perils of the tribulation period. 
because Jesus goes on to say, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. This portion of the kingdom in view, where mortals live, will last for 1,000 years, the millennial rule. And then all mortals who are saved will receive their eternal bodies as well. Does that clear that up? But the kingdom of God, which is in view in 1 Corinthians 15, only has eternal beings in view, i.e. those who are resurrected from the dead in imperishable, i.e. immortal bodies who will inherit their portion of the eternal kingdom. Moving on, 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. There you go. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable. There you go. Mortal body, imperishable body, immortal body. And we will all be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. So we can't say that I'm worthy to go to heaven right now in my mortal body. But my future resurrection body, I will definitely be blameless and holy and all ready for eternity. Flesh and blood will inherit the mortal temporal kingdom of God. Point B. The faithful remnant of Israel will inherit the promised land in mortal flesh and blood bodies. Joshua 1, 1 to 6. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord, said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these peoples, these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised, Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river, the Euphrates, and all the Hittite country, to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Israel, be strong and courageous. Israel and their mortal bodies, because you will lead these peoples to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. That generation of Israel, yet to believe in Jesus, to a man, is in view right here. Notice that Israel will inherit the promised land, which other passages indicate will be part of the kingdom of God. Look at Isaiah 65, 8 to 10. Verse 8, this is what the Lord says, as when juice is still found in a cluster of grapes, and men say, don't destroy it, there is yet some good in it, so will I do in behalf of my servants that will not destroy them all. But certainly, all throughout the history of Israel, for 2,000 years nearly, they have many been destroyed. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, those who will possess my mountains, my chosen people will inherit them, and they will be my servants. They, they, there will my servants live. Sharon will become a pasture for flocks in the valley of Echor, a resting place for herds for my people who will seek me. Zephaniah 2, 9-11. Therefore, as surely as I live, I declare as the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, surely Moab. Moab will become like Sodom and the Ammonites like Gomorrah, a place of weeds and salt pits, a wasteland forever. The remnant of my people will plunder them. The survivors of my nation will inherit their land. This is what they will get in return for their pride for insulting and mocking the people of the Lord Almighty. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, the new covenant, Israel and Israel alone. This is it. The Lord will resume to them when he destroys all the gods of the land. The nations of every shore will worship him, everyone in his own land. Notice that the remnant of my people, the survivors of my nation, Israel, will inherit their land. The word survivors has a mortal implication here, flesh and blood who will inherit the promised land in the kingdom of God. Compare Matthew 25, 31 to 34. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Second coming, okay? He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. There will be unbelievers on the planet, immortal bodies, and believers on the planet, immortal bodies, they will be on his right. Then the kingdom, the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. 
So, don't get confused. Just discern, dissect. Language, context, and logic. Carefully read. Notice that the saints in view here are in flesh and blood, mortal bodies at the beginning when they inherit the kingdom of God. Of course, they'll have immortal ones. There is nothing in the text to indicate whether or not these are Jews and or Gentiles. Certainly both are on the earth. None are stipulated as being transformed into immortal bodies. But the Gentiles who are believers, who remain on the earth, they'll have participation in the millennial kingdom for a thousand years, and they'll get their immortal bodies. First Chronicles 16, 17, 18. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. Psalm 69, 36. The children of his servants will inherit it, the promised land, verse 35, and those who love his name will dwell there. 65, 9 of Isaiah. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, those who will possess my mountains. My chosen people will inherit them. There will my servants live. Isaiah 11, 6 to 12, the wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Notice that mortal flesh and blood Bodies are in view here. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, from Lower Egypt, from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Malam, from Babylonia, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered peoples of Judah from the four quarters of the earth. Israel is in view. Micah 4, 1 8. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. Many nations, many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his way, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. Millennial rule here. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning, pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Every man will sit under his own vine and under his own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid, for the Lord Almighty has spoken. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods. We will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. In that day, declares the Lord, I will gather the lame, I will assemble the exiles and those I have brought to grief. I will make the lame a remnant, those driven away a strong nation. The Lord will rule over them in Mount Zion from that day and forever. Millennial rules the first thousand years of this forever kingdom. As for you, O watchtower of the flock, O stronghold of the daughter of Zion, that former, the former dominion will be restored to you. Kingship will be coming to the daughter of Jerusalem. Zechariah 14, 16 and 21. Then the survivors from all the nations and after our Lord's judgment of the nations, Matthew 25, 31 to 46, which we just read about, that have attacked Jerusalem will go up year after year to worship the king, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Notice the word survivors pointing to mortals who are inhabitants of the kingdom. If any of the peoples of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord Almighty, they will have no reign. They have a choice there to believe or not. If the Egyptian people do not go up and take part, they will have no rain. They won't be blessed. The Lord will bring on them the plague he inflicts on the nations that do not go up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not go up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. On that day, holy to the Lord will be inscribed on the bells of the horses and the cooking pots in the Lord's house will be like the sacred bowls in front of the altar. Every pot in Jerusalem. And Judah will be holy to the Lord Almighty, and all who come to sacrifice will take some of the pots and cook in them. And on that day there will be no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord Almighty. Throughout all of this passage, we have mortals in view, in view as inhabitants of the kingdom who will be blessed and punished in accordance with their obedience. Only mortals have the capacity to disobey, immortals do not. So there you go.